Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Unit Lost. I'm Stylosa. So, let's have a chat about Civilization Beyond Earth because I've been getting a lot of um, people sending me messages and stuff over Twitter, uh, over YouTube, Facebook, whatever, saying, Sty, where is the Civilization Beyond Earth series? Because, of course, uh, we made quite a popular Civilization V um, British Empire series. And we, we fully intended to do that in space. The problem is, I've got a lot of problems with Civilization Beyond Earth. So let's let's talk about this. The game, like I, I kind of foolishly expected it to be on par with the features that are currently available in Civ 5. Okay, so Civ 5 has had a ton of expansions, uh, a load of new content. And I expected it to at least be up to that level of which they can then build on. Now, you're probably saying, well, Sty, Civ V launched in a really, really basic state. You know, it didn't have religions. The trade stuff was a mess. I think it didn't actually have the trade stuff. There was a load of stuff missing. It, it was not really that good. You can, you can compare that to Civ IV. Civ IV had loads more content. But this is where I kind of let them off at Firaxis, is Civ V, uh, Civ v sorry, had a completely new engine. You know, the game worked in a different way. The combat was different and all kinds of stuff like that. So I could kind of almost afford them the the fact that they did not it didn't really it didn't launch with as much content as Civ 4 ended with okay now of course that had loads of um, expansions as well however Civ Beyond Earth okay guys is exactly the same as Civ 5 the graphics engine is the same yeah there are new assets okay so the maps are different the uh, the models for the leaders are different the UI is different and horrendously bad, by the way. Um, but that's like, you know, that's kind of it. It To me, I, it is a game that does need expansions, okay. But I, I, was, I was hoping and hoping and hoping that it would not be the case. I thought that it would be on par with Civ V because it's essentially the same game. They've said in the past, you know, oh, it, it, what this is, is Civ, it's Civ V in space. It's not Alpha Centauri, so don't expect anything like that, which, you know, I, I, it was fine. I, was, I didn't really... I wasn't expecting that after they stated that it was just going to be Civ 5 in space, a natural evolution of that. And the game, to be fair, does feel like a natural evolution of Civ when you you know, you know go you go to a different planet sort of thing. But there's a ton of problems I've got with the game. And this is where I'm going to go into detail on, on, on the issues I've got because this is what makes it difficult for me to kind of produce video content for it on the channel. So I've played maybe five games of Civ Beyond Earth and I have no will at all to play it anymore. In fact, I want to play Civ 5. This is the problem. Every time I play Civ Beyond Earth, I feel like this would be better this is time better spent playing Civ 5. Civ 5 is a much better game. This is like fact. This is 100% fact. Civ Beyond Earth, while not being a bad game, is it's kind of meh. You know what I mean? It's sort of like in it, you can see it's Civ and because I'm a massive fan of the series, I, I really want to like the game. But then you can also see where it's fallen short in a load of different ways. And it's just like, oh my god. I mean, let me just give you an example of what would happen uh, in a typical Sith Beyond Earth game based off the experience that I've had. So I was playing a lot of these games on um, the harder difficulties, okay? So I, I was expecting a challenge, ladies and gentlemen. I was not getting a challenge at all. In fact, the AI is extremely passive. Like, it will not attack you unless it's the only thing left to do, Okay. The way the game works as well, it, it's 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 almost, uh, I guess it's kind of counterintuitive in the sense of it kind of really doesn't want you to expand. I've noticed in a lot of the games I've had, you know, bearing in mind I said I've had like five or so games, um, they have been fairly long games, but the number of cities is not like, it isn't like Civ Five where you've got like 10, 20 cities, you know, on a large map. It's like you've got five uh, colonies, which are the cities in, in Civ Beyond Earth, and that's it. Now, I think the big the, the reason for this is there's a statistic in the game called health. Okay, so your colony needs to be in positive health for it to function. If it goes into negative health, so it becomes unhealthy, then it doesn't really work as well. Well, I mean, you're totally crippled. It's the same mechanic as happiness in um, Civ 5. In fact, it's exactly the same. But where it's different is a lot of the game is based around finding... Uh, it, it, it's sort of like... Well, whenever you're given a choice in the game, okay, if it's a choice between having energy, which is the equivalent of gold, okay, or some sort of resource or something like uh, culture or whatever, right? If health is there, you always take health because everything you do impacts the health of the colony. So if you, if your city starts growing, okay, your colony, your happy, your healthness, see what I mean? It's happiness. It's just fucking happiness, but your health will go down, okay? Uh, you found more outposts, it will go down. You take over new cities, it will go down. And you can say, well, yes, yeah, this is the same in Civ 5. It is, but in Civ 5, you can mitigate the loss 
way better, right? It's it's way better. There's loads of different options you've got. Whereas in Beyond Earth, it's like healthiness is the main stat. Every time you're given the option to take that, you need to take it because that is then going to allow you to basically found another outpost. And this kind of has problems, okay? So the early game, I think, isn't that bad in Civ Beyond Earth. So you've got the whole thing with the aliens, right? Now, the aliens are... They're sort of like barbarians on steroids, although they're a little bit different. So they don't tend to attack you outright unless you're by one of their nests. Now, you could, unfortunately, spawn next to a nest, which is irritating because they'll attack your workers and things like that. Um, they will, however, attack your trade convoys and they, will, they, they seek them out and kill them if they come near them, which is irritating, although you can uh, deflect that with some technology, but it's still irritating uh, if there happens to be an alien nest in the way. And it's like, oh my god. But yeah, for the early game, the aliens are not that bad, okay? And you're given, like, well, you get the basic uh, soldier unit, which everybody gets, um, which I'll get onto in a minute, because a lot of the units are basically the same. And there's no kind of tech progression uh, where, you, you know, like in Civ Five, you could have, like, a spearman against a tank. I know that's a totally ludicrous situation. You can't have that in uh, Civ Beyond Earth because everything all upgrades simultaneously, which is a bit weird, and there's also not a lot of units, but I'll get onto that. So yeah, the early game, um, the aliens are not bad, uh, but it kind of goes really quick. You end up skipping through turns because there's not really much to do. You send your explorer out and he'll go and find resource pods and stuff. You'll get quests which are, on the face of it, the first time I played, I was like, oh, this is a really nice mechanic, until the second time I played and I got given exactly the same quest. And then in the third time and the fourth time, the quests are always the same. And they're pointless, a lot of them. It'll be... Find two resource pods with your explorer. You always find two resource pods. One will be found a colony, because when you do that, you get a free soldier unit. It's like, oh yeah, every single time it's the same. There are a ton of ones which are just like, uh, oh, the clinic can provide plus one health, for example, or plus one energy. Now, th that might not be totally accurate, but you get a lot of this coming in all the time. But most of the time, they're pointless, because it's like, well, I'm going to take the health. All day, every day, I don't care about the plus one whatever the house it was going to give me. You know, so they are irritating. You end up just blasting through them. Like, eventually, if you played enough games, you, would not even, you wouldn't even check to see what they are. You would just keep clicking off them. You know what I mean? You'd be like, well, yeah, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, or whatever. So, into the mid-game. Now, this is where it sort of... Um, it starts to show some of its unique flair off, I guess. So this is when you start to get a little bit active with your uh, affinity selection. So this is where you, you can, based off your research that you go for, you can decide, or, and like some of the quest objectives, that you, well, quest decisions that you make, um, you can decide to go down one path. Now, a lot of the time, I ended up going down Supremacy, which is the uh, like AI robot-infused kind of path. So what happens is when you get enough points in one of your affinity trees, you can then upgrade all of your units, okay, to the next tier. So the soldier will upgrade to a marine. He does that for everybody. And then after that, it will upgrade to, like, your specific one. So I think it's something like the Acolyte for the uh, Supremacy guys. But this means every soldier unit on the map just instantly upgrades to this advanced unit. So you've only really got one unit. Okay, you also get vehicles as well. Um, you get, like, a scout buggy, which will then upgrade to, like, a tank, depending on what affinity you are. You get a boat, you get a plane, and then you get, a spe like, a special unit, for your, well, you might get maybe two special units for your affinity. I think you get like a, yeah, you get like a, in fact, no, actually, you get three. You get like a special infantry unit, a special, like, artillery unit I got for the uh, Supremacy guys, and then a special, like, super unit kind of thing where everybody gets like a really massive unit, like they've got a massive, like, robot walk thing. Uh, and that's kind of it. And none of this is dependent on the faction you pick at the start of the game. So if you go with, like, um, the, uh, I, I don't know, any arc, let's say you go with arc, okay, uh, I think that's the American Reclamation uh, conglomerate or corporation or something like that. They, it would just be the same as if you went with a different faction, let's say Brasilia, for example, um, and went down the same path. You'd still get the same units. And that, to me, really just is kind of annoying because it's like, well, there's no, there's no, there's no uniqueness to the factions because some of the factions have got, quite frankly, OP um, bonuses and some of them are totally pointless so everybody who's literally going to play is maybe a couple factions and that's it they're not going to bother with any of the other ones it's like well that's great anyway so we're in the mid game and you maybe found a few colonies uh you might do a little bit of this diplomacy is essentially the same as civ 5 so it's not really that great but uh that's kind of it you also get city states but they're not called city states they're called outposts now the thing with the outposts are they control one tile 
which I found kind of weird because a city-state in Civ controls an area, doesn't it? It controls resources. It'll give you resources. It'll, you know, it'll do certain things. You can buy influence with it and all kinds of that. Uh, with, with Beyond Earth, it's just a place you can trade with. That's it. And it's like, well, okay. You do get given the option to decide which one appears next to you, which can be kind of nice, but uh, that's kind of it. And, I, you know, I'm... That's that's a dumbing down of a system which they already had, and it's I don't know why that they were not just like alien bases or something. I, it's weird. It's really weird. But let's go into the end game. This is where it just devolves. Every game devolves into a uh, a domination victory. So there's a load of different ways you can win, but it quickly becomes quite obvious that it's much easier to just wipe everybody out because the AI, as I said, is very passive. You can just sit there with a massive army and just take city after city after city. Now, bear in mind, you will have no uh, healthiness in your cities if you do this, because there is, I, I have found no way to mitigate this effect. As soon as you start taking enemy cities, you can just forget about your happiness, it, uh, your healthiness, because it will just go into the negative, and that's it. But it don't even matter. Every game I've won, I've ended with massive uh, negative happiness. Oh, by the way, I've won every single game. I've ended with massive negative happiness, because it's just... I've just Healthiness, sorry, but it is effectively happiness. For God's sake, you just... It, it's the same. You know, I, the thing is, guys, I just wanted to make this video to throw my thoughts out, and I haven't, I haven't structured this in the sense of I've not wrote any notes down or anything like that. I wanted it to come across as if it was just like from a passionate Civ player because I enjoy Civ. While I might not be the best Civ player ever, I do enjoy Civ, and I've lost loads of hours to Civ, and I really wanted to make some content for Civ Beyond Earth for the channel. But at, the, at this moment in time, it is just like it is not worth it because the, the it would be boring to watch, guys. It would literally be boring to watch, or it requires so much editing it would just be pointless anyway. Because, as I say, the early game is really quick. Well, not really quick. It's just non. It's just uneventful. Nothing happens. You just skip in turn after turn after turn after turn. There's nothing to worry about. It's just like bleh, aliens. Yeah, whatever. Maybe there'll be some near. Yeah, that's fine. You go into the mid game. You manage in a small. A very small uh, empire by Civ's five standards. Uh, and then into the late game, you kind of get your small empire to a, down whatever path you wanted to go down with the affinity tree. So again, let's just say supremacy. You start building your special units and then you realise, well, I'm supremacy and it's given me a load of special units. So I'm just going to go and kill the enemy with them. And the game just evolves into a race that who can go through the affinity trees faster to get the upgrades. Because every time you go up an affinity point, you get more like upgrades you can spend on your units. So you get the higher tier unit, and then you just go and attack everybody with t the, the units below you because it doesn't really matter what faction they or what affinity they've gone from. Let's say they've gone for purity, and your affinity makes no difference because your units, if they're a higher level, will just kill them anyway. And that's basically what it devolves to. And I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a bit sad, guys, but I think I'm just going to put it on the back burner, and we'll just see what happens in terms of content-wise because I have no will to go and play this game. Like I said, I'd rather play Civ 5. So at, at this moment in time, you'll probably see a Civ 5, maybe a little Civ 5 miniseries or something on this channel in the future before you see a Civilization Beyond Earth one. So there you go, guys. What I want to know is your thoughts on the game. So what do you think about Civ Beyond Earth if you've been playing it? You've just listened to my thoughts and I've gone into detail on most aspects that really pissed me off. Um, and some, well, I, I, I kind of never really spoke about the covert ops, but again, that's a system... Well, I'll just quickly speak about that. So that's a system which... On the face of it, I thought it was pretty good because it's it's sort of like an advanced spying system compared to what you get on Civ uh, 5. But there's a couple of problems because you have to raise intrigue level in cities to be able to perform different types of covert tasks. Now, depending on what affinity you've gone for, you get special covert tasks. Okay, so you can... Um, I think I think affinity... Uh, I think um, supremacy can take over the city. Purity can drop a dirty bomb, so like a dirty nuclear bomb in the city, and Harmony call the Siege Worm, which is like a massive alien, to smash the city in. Um, but it's practically impossible to get to that level of intrigue, because it's really easy to deflect, to, to stop intrigue growth in your cities, so it's kind of, yeah, it was nice, but then it's pointless, and then it becomes irritating as shit. Oh, and actually, let's talk about trade routes as well, because they are a bit irritating. Um, you get two per city, Unless you take, um, I forget which faction it is, but they get three in the capital. But uh, you get two per city. So if you've got a couple of cities down, right? Say you've got like ten. By the, well, well, you wouldn't have ten. Let's say you've, ca let's say you're like me, and you've gone on a massive empire war, and you've just captured loads of 
outposts and God knows what, and you've got 10 cities, okay? That means you've got 20 trade routes. Um, and there's no way to automate the trade route. So you can't say constantly keep trading with that and carry on with it. After it's done its trade, you know, the couple of uh, routes back and forth, it'll go, oh, where would you like me to go? Now, when you've got that many, it's constantly popping up on the screen and it sends you fucking wild. And I haven't even got into things like the orbital layer and stuff like that in the game, which just, oh my God. But I'll leave you with this, guys, because this is a very simple question. Where the hell are the weapons of mass destruction? There is no nuclear bomb. There is no, like, fusion bomb. There is no, like, anything like that in the game. It's just, you get a ground, you get an infantry, you get a tank, you get a couple of special units, you get a boat, you get a plane. That's it. Oh, you, you get an aircraft carrier as well. That's it. I mean, what the hell? Anyway, guys, th these are my thoughts on Sip Beyond Earth. Very, like, fluid thoughts, because, like I said, I've not made any notes. I just wanted to, I just wanted to rant about it, because I'm just, like, I'm angry, ladies and gentlemen, because I wanted more. Um, I want to know what your thoughts are on this. What do you think about Sith Beyond Earth? How many games have you played? Uh, have you found any issues? Is, is, have you found things that you really like about the game? Um, and, and stuff like that. I'd like to know. All right, guys. I've been Salosa. This is Unit Lost. If you like the channel, then... Well, if you like the video, then like the video and subscribe to the channel and all that good stuff. And I'll catch you next time, people. Toodaloo.